Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to watch you this video by CNA Insider and it's a topic about someone who is mature and also retrenched from an industry after being part of it for 14 years. In this video, I'm going to evaluate for you in a few ways. I'm going to touch on firstly, emergency cash. I'm going to really expand on that topic. And secondly, I'll be giving you some tips on how you can improve your own job prospects. So with that, let's roll in the video. I'm always uh, excited to meet people. Uh, customer service, I'm very good at that. Now, Malika, if I'm not wrong, works with Changi Aviation Group, which I think is a government related agency. And nonetheless, she still got laid off. But also, the point that aviation as an industry is being decimated by COVID 19. It's unsurprising that you know staff have been laid off from various positions. Through my research, looking at SIA shares and SETS shares, I do realize that the full recovery is going to take years. It's not going to recover in months. That's why laying off staff was a necessity to the organization. This is for one week recommendation. Now this is a good reminder actually that there are families with difficult backgrounds. Marika's husband has stroke, mom is in bad health. In a lot of ways, these medication and medical bills are costs that are very difficult to shake off for any family. So do remember to donate, especially if you are of a better background and you have extras. Do remember to donate because in our society there are those that are less fortunate. And second part also. If you have extra time, do go and exercise, keep yourself healthy because at the end of the day, when you are healthy, your family avoids this financial burden that you potentially can transfer to them. So keep that in mind. It was very stressful because I don't know when I'll be getting the next job, you see. Very at least for a month, I need about 2000 savings so that helps me uh, a lot during my rainy days. I can sustain with my saving about uh, five months, not uh, more than that. I still need to look for a full-time job. Now let's pause it right there. $500 for mortgage and also a son who's still studying in polytechnic. So her expenses are about $2,000. And Malika has shared she has about five months worth of emergency cash. If we add it up, that's about $10,000 only. So if I were to be brutally honest, Malika is probably not in good financial status in a lot of ways. And if we reference to this article, 14.5% of our population have less than 13,500. That puts Maliga at the bottom end of the scale. And in a lot of ways, at age of 50, if she has only saved up this amount, that is a bit sad. Maybe along the way, her financial steps were not correct. Now let's touch back on the problem of emergency cash. Most in financial planning advocate three to six months you know, of your expenses to be kept in cash. Now, if you are younger, 20s, 30s, actually, I do believe three months of expenses may even be enough already. But if we look back at the case study, Malika has three dependents. First, a son who is in polytechnic. The second is a husband who has stroke. And the third is a mom who is not too healthy. Now, all these costs, they are fixed costs. They can't be, you know, removed away suddenly. It's not like, you know, a travel expense whereby suddenly you don't travel, that money can be saved up. Or you're eating expensive, you can just cut it back for yourself. Malika has three dependents and it's all fixed costs. And in addition, she's a bit older, age 50, correct? Which means finding employment is naturally slower than someone's younger. So if you're in a similar situation, my suggestion is to aim, instead of three to six months, aim for 12 months of emergency cash. Because when rainy day hits, you have dependents you need to feed, your employment opportunities are not so fast, these 12 months will really remove away a lot of that stress. So hopefully that gives you a new perspective of how to think about emergency cash. When you're younger, you may not need so much cash. And when you're older, you really need to scale up your emergency cash because these are situations whereby you really need that savings to save your day. Last time, we leave it to the agency to search for us. I was lost because after 14 years to look for another job, I don't know really how where to look. They told me to refrain my resume, what other language I'm good at, and my qualification was not there. Now, let's pause it right there. I have a question for you. Do you actually have a LinkedIn account? And if you have, when was the last time you've actually updated your own LinkedIn account? Now, you know, Malika, she's actually been scrambling to fulfill her resume, create a, a profile for herself. 
But what I've learned from you know working with different private clients is that those who succeed in their career don't leave it to chance. Don't leave, don't leave it to last minute. They actually plot their careers deep religiously in a lot of ways. So it's not left to chance. So I have a few tips for you, especially for LinkedIn. So take note of it, especially if you are trying to build your career. The first is you need to have recommendations because what people see, other people saying is what they believe. It's not what you say. So get recommendations. Now the second is you have to post about your industry regularly. Simply because that gives you the perception that you are a thought leader or you are relevant to the industry. You know a lot about your industry. Now the third is if you can explain a story in your career so far. Now this is a tip simply because recruiters look at your profile and imagine if you can fit what their client is expecting. So if you appear to fit, naturally they'll give you a chance, naturally they do a recommendation for you. So keep that in mind, update your LinkedIn profile and do these relevant tips if you haven't already done so. I understand that Malinga comes from a non-healthcare background. There are natural difficulties, right? Like healthcare jargon and the IT systems. Her skills in terms of handling patients is very confident. She has an edge over many of our new hires, fresh grad. Now, transiting to healthcare absolutely makes sense. Healthcare is doing right, right now very well. And another sector that I can highlight to you is actually technology sector. Tech sector, there's actually a program that a friend of mine has actually joined. This is the TESA program, the Tech Skills Accelerator Initiative. And being a part of that, he actually found a new job with an MNC in Singapore. So there are various programs out there that can help you transit to different sectors, to healthcare, and even to technology. So hopefully that information helped. And if you have benefited, smash on like so that more people can see valuable content like this. And again, inviting you to press on subscribe because along the weeks ahead, I'll be sharing more with you on how to build your own finances and be financially successful. Now, back to the point of the clinic manager. You know, right now he's full of praise, correct? Malika is a good asset to the team. Her soft skills are transferable. Uh, she's actually outperforming her peers. But I want you to take a guess. What was Malika's point of view going towards this job? Was she scared? Was she insecure about, you know, this career change? Did she think that she would be valuable to the team? Think about it. And with that, let me show you her real answer. Job. She was feeling very insecure. The main factor was because of her age, thinking that would I even get a job at this age? My experience that I had in Changi, is this still relevant? There, you see? So think about it a little bit differently. Right now, if you have some hurdles in your life, there can be different perspectives. You're actually not as bad as what you, you, you imagine or fear yourself to be. You're actually quite valuable to different organizations if you know how to present your own value to them. For the next five years, I'd like to take up a supervisor's courses. I must concentrate on my job first to come to my next level. For the workers, I would strongly encourage them to upgrade yourself. So don't always say, uh, I cannot, I'm uh, always willing to accept whatever job is given to you. Always willing to learn uh, new things. Now, Malika has actually mentioned two key points. The first is always be willing to accept any job given to you. Now, I actually disagree with that. That sounds very defeated. What I'll suggest instead is if you want a particular job, aim and work towards there and fight for it. Or even better, create out that role. Now, you know, starting this channel, no one taught me as a financial advisor, you can actually educate people and build your business this way. So I've actually changed how it's being done. I've actually built up my own role. So I do believe if you want the maximum passion for your job, you can actually strive to create your own role or if not fight for the position that you think is ideal for yourself. Now, the second point is always be willing to learn new things. That I totally agree. Now, you know, in this day and age, it's all digital. Everything's on a mobile phone. Everything is interactive. And with that, if you want to learn new skills, I'll introduce you to today's sponsor for the video. Now, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. And if you're looking to upgrade yourself with more skills, look for Skillshare's masterclasses. Now, in particular, if you want to pick up more on video editing, because video editing is so important nowadays, you know, with so much video content going around, look for Jordi's masterclasses. Now within Skillshare, he actually has beginner courses all the way to advanced courses. And unlike his YouTube channel, you realize that there's a lot more structure to how things are being taught to you. So that gives you a very good head start. And as you can see, the reviews are fantastic. For more on Skillshare, the first 1,000 to click the link in the description below, we'll get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership. We're really very proud of her. When someone gets retrained, they easily lose hope. 
my mom was very strong. She's an iron lady. Now I think what we can learn for today's video is Maliga's tenacity to solve her own situation. Now it's much better than sitting back and complaining. There are really a lot of government initiatives that can help anyone match jobs. And if you're willing to put in the effort, put yourself out there, make the changes, do the upgrades, you can find yourself opportunities also. So hopefully this brightens up your day in some way. For financial situation wise, Maliga seems to be a bit behind. I'm not too sure if it's still in time because she's now taking a pay cut and she's much older in age already. But if you are younger, in your 20s, 30s or even early 40s, then there can be steps you can take right now to change away certain habits and I have this previous video to introduce to you. 7 money habits that can keep anyone poor. Maybe it can help you change your financial direction and make yourself better off in the future. With that, I'll see you there. Take care and goodbye.